video, we're going to take a look at some polynomial inequalities, and we're going to solve them by graphing. Okay, so specifically, we have a quadratic here that is going to be represented by inequality. We're going to look at how, how can we solve this graphically. So we're going to use a graphing calculator to help us through here, and I'm going to talk about all the pieces as far as, all right, once you have it in a calculator, what can you do? So <clears throat> we have x squared plus 1x minus 6. What I'm going to do is take this left side and plug it into y equals. Take this entire left side and plug it into y equals. Um, if you ever, by the way, receive a problem where it's not equal to zero on the other side, um, what you can do is move everything on the left side. Subtract it all over, add it all over, get it equal to zero, you know. Um, but I'm going to take this x squared plus 1x minus 6, and in a calculator, <clears throat> I'm going to put that into my y equals, okay? x squared plus 1x minus 6, and we're going to graph it, okay? When we're graphing it, what we really, really care about is uh, kind of where our x-intercepts are at. So you should be able to see them pretty easily. Looks like it's at positive 2 and negative 3, okay? That's as far as I'm going to go with the graphing calculator. From here on out, I'm going to sketch this on my paper and be able to progress without that. So we kind of had a graph and just drawn a rough, rough graph here that uh, had intercepts at 2 and negative 3. So we had our quadratic, our parabola go something like this. What we're interested in and where my eyes should go first is pay attention to the x-intercepts, okay? Pay attention to the x-intercepts. So they were at negative 3 and positive 2, okay? That's where my eyes go first. The second thing I'm going to pay attention to is I'm going to really pay attention to this inequality, okay? We need to look at the inequality. If we get a statement that is greater than 0, Okay, what's going to happen is imagine our x-axis, and not really imagine, our x-axis is zero. So this is saying I want everything greater than zero. So that means I want above the x-axis if we saw greater than zero. If I saw less than zero, then we would want below the x-axis, okay? So if it's greater than zero, you want the above the x-axis. If it's less than zero, you want below the x-axis. So some people are like, well, wait, what does that all mean? So <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to, hold on one second. Thank you. <clears throat> um, what we're going to do is we're going to <clears throat> take this graph, and we want the parts that are above the x-axis. We only want the parts above the x-axis. So when I look at this original graph, I want those pieces right there. So I need this piece and that piece of my graph, okay? So if you're looking at it, here's one, two, one, two, three. This piece to the right, this piece to the left. So we're still at two, we're still at negative three. What I need to do is I need to come up with some inequalities that represent these pieces, okay? Inequalities that represent these pieces. So the tough part is figuring out how do I write an inequality for a point and an arrow, a point and an arrow. So how these are going to work is you're going to have x, and here's where those x-intercepts come to play. We're going to have x, and that negative 3 number comes into play. We're going to have x and that positive 2 comes into play. So I paid attention, I want the above pieces, x and the number, which is the x-intercept, x and the number, which is the x-intercept. The final thing we have to figure out is, great, we have all this, but what's the inequality? How we do that is something we talked about last unit with piecewise functions and all that. If my graph is tailing to the lower end, it's going off and to the left there, off and to the left here, we want inequalities such as less thans. If my graph is tailing off to the right, we're getting higher and higher and higher, we want the greater thans, okay? So if we're going off to the left, the lower end, you want less thans. If you're tailing off to the right, you're getting bigger, you want the greater thans. Another way you can remember these inequalities, and it's kind of a non-mathematical way, is my graph is going off to the left, these almost look like arrows pointing to the left. My graph is going to the right. These almost look like arrows pointing to the right. 
So for this piece over here, we started at negative three and we're going off to the left. I need to choose one of these two inequalities. So people wonder, well, which one should I choose? That's where you need to go back to our original equation. This was just a greater than, there is no equal to, there is no line underneath. So what we want is we want the same inequality, we're just gonna flip the direction on it, just no line underneath. So we want x is less than negative three. For this graph, we are tailing to the right, we're going to the higher, end, higher uh, set, uh, part of the graph. We gotta figure out which of these two inequalities to do. Um, my original graph did not have a line underneath, so I'm not gonna have a line underneath, so we're gonna choose this. Okay, those are your two solutions to this inequality, okay? The only thing that would change is, let's say if you had a, you know, the equal to there, then these would have the equal to. What I'm gonna do is I have a, a second kind of example here. It's the same one, but I flipped around the inequality just to show you what happens. So it's still the same ideas of, yeah, you wanna graph it, you wanna pay attention to those x intercepts. Okay, so it's the same exact graph. All I did is I switched around the inequality. So we're still at negative three and two, but this time the inequality says I want less than zero, which if you remember up above means if you're less than zero, you want below the x-axis. You want all of these pieces down here. So this kind of segment right here. So if I'm looking at things, I'm trying to write an inequality that represents the quadratic between negative three and two. I'm trying to represent this piece right here. So if we're trying to write that, I just want to identify, well, how would you even write an answer for that? It's pretty simple. Again, pay attention to your x-intercepts, negative three and two, and notice my graph is in the middle. So I'm gonna write my negative three and write my two, since my graph is in the middle, put your x in the middle. We're gonna make a compound inequality. So what I need is I need two inequalities to go in between here. How do you figure out which inequalities to do? Pay attention to the original problem. If it was a less than, we're gonna use two less thans. Even if it was a less than or a greater than, it's still two less thans pointing in the same direction. If it was a greater than or equal to, then I'm gonna use equal twos as well as my answer. So I'm gonna take this inequality Use the same one, but always open them to the right. So what I'm trying to say here is if it was open the other way, just flip it around, always open it to the right. If it has, excuse me, the equal to, the line underneath, make sure these have the equal to. That would be your solution for that segment, okay? So this is a, I know it's a very, very quick video, but a quick rundown and a refresher on how to solve polynomial inequalities.